here we are with top five steps to make a theremin hero, or whatever this is about. Step one, you get the idea. Step two, you move in, you write down all your ideas here. And step three, you make a billion measurements. There's so many measurements. After that, you make not three 3D models. Then you make a really botched time lapse. And then, and then you have this thing. So let's get right to the point. What is Theremin here? It combines the concepts of Guitar Hero, the video game, with that of a theremin. The theremin being an electronic instrument, which you control with your hand above a sensor. So this is Theremin here, the final version, and um, I'm just going to show off sort of the functionality of it. It's been a few months and I've been on vacation since it actually was programmed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do react to my own code. What? Clickbait? What? So here we are with the full song list and let's just read this off right here. Looks like we have Megalovania. Uh, okay. The mine, oh, that's the Minecraft parody. Okay, this is getting worse. Somebody requested the uh, non-copyright sound uh, YouTube channel song. They're, they're pretty cool. Uh, it's copyright free music, somebody suggested. And real cool, oh, real cool. That's the, the song that features Peter Griffin saying, real cool. Right. Would good friends suggest these songs? I don't know. Now that we have depression going, let's go ahead and play the actual songs. I'm gonna start in practice mode which is just randomly generated notes. And as you can hear, it's just a classic theremin sound. You know, this is exactly what a theremin sounds like. So you'll see the notes coming in from the right side of the screen to the left. All we have to do is block it with our purple thing. And in order to block it, we just need to be sort of in the same area. We can move it up, as you can see, by having it high, which will then make it loop through the cleft. And then by putting our hand low, it will make it go down. The lower we put it, the faster it goes down. The higher we put it, the faster it goes up. This will allow us to really move around on the cleft. Without further ado, let's swap to a real song, and you will be impressed by my skills. Let's start with a classic Megalovania. And right away, after, as you hear me play this song, you're going to really be able to um, sort of tell that it's Megalovania. And by that, I mean you won't... have a few more time lapses of me playing some interesting songs and then let's get into the details of how this wonderful system works because I know you're all itching to know those wonderful details. Oh, and that's the death screen. So, time lapse, go! ask how does this wonderful life-saving box work well it's really quite simple you have your Arduino here which of course communicates to the ultrasonic sensor which will then get the distance to your hand and return that as a number using sonar this is then given to the Arduino which will calculate based on what the number is what note it should be on the clef of treble which is the best clef really bass clef get out of here it is then sent to the computer, which will play the game with the notes. Now there's another small system. You might notice that, of course, we're not playing the notes. So this is actually, the raw number is beamed out to a speaker seen here on the box, which will, of course, play the note in real time. Now there's actually another small system. It's really, it's really not anything. You're just going to, so let's say the, the number you're getting isn't one of the octaves. What you can do is repeatedly divide the number by two until it is one of the octaves. That's how octaves work in my two seconds of research. Now, 
This is pretty much everything, but really there's another small system. The treble clef is really too much for the average pitiful human mind to handle, and so in order to do this we have an assistant system to help people play the song. And what it is is really quite simple. We have a button that whenever you press it will restart the song and get the song that you're playing from the computer. It also will track what time it happens in between two notes. It'll use that to track what note number of the song that you should be on. It'll then take the song you should be on and the note number to get the note you should be on at any given time. Let's say you should be on a B. And let's say you're playing a D at that time. It'll then average these notes together to get a C. And of course this is what you actually play. There's another small system. It's really, really simple. The problem is if you have a C and you play a D, they won't match up in octaves. So all you have to do is reduce the D down to the base octave D and count the number of octaves, which is three, and then take a C and octave it up to the third octave up to get a C. Now this is actually what's played out to the Arduino speaker and what's actually played out to the laptop in order to play the songs. So it's really quite simple. You might ask, where did you get this wonderful custom box from? It's actually from my brand new 3D printer, which there's actually going to be a reveal in the next scene. So pretend like you didn't hear this part. It's like, this is non-canon. This is non-canon. I have a 3D printer. It's pretty cool. I made the box and uh... speaking of the 3D print itself, a little bit of a story time here. This thing's got some hooks here, which you might ask, why would it need those? Turns out this is exactly the perfect size for a Raspberry Pi to fit under here and to hook up to a screen to run the program the laptop was running. Now the problem with this is you got to realize that, that Raspberry Pi is like seven years old. So it was running at like three FPS and it was dropping serial communication. So it just didn't work at all, like 70% of the time. So that's moral of the story. Moral of the story, I am a genius, but also don't use a seven year old Raspberry Pi. Yes. Next scene now. So here we are with a little piece of code I wrote. Now this is a pretty simple piece of code. All it'll do is randomly roll a number one to a thousand and randomly say winner or no winner. This is for the giveaway I'm doing. You can win Theremin Hero itself in the mail. If you comment down below, first word has to be prize, one entry per person, first 24 hours. After this is collected, I'll go from the most liked comment to the least liked comment, go down until I make a winner. The first winner will be sent, I'll get into contact with you, and if you respond, you will get the Theremin Hero in the mail. I will also email you the code and sort of some install instructions, and it should be able to run on your computer. The one caveat is you need to have a, you need to fiddle with the COM ports because there's no way I can try to figure out what COM port your device has because if they're on like a Raspberry Pi, it's like TTY dev. And then if you're on this, it's just USB. So it might work randomly if you just try all the USB ports. But if you don't, you're gonna need to try to figure out the, you're gonna need to try to figure out all your ports and put it into the try statement at the top of my code. It can hold up to two ports at a time. Um, you could make it better if you wanted to. You could make nested try statements. Um, so that'll be pretty easy. If you need help with that, I will be able to contact you. You just need to send me an address and an email address and I'll send you the code and the device itself. Now the one thing is you're going to also need Python 3 and that should be everything.